All right, welcome everybody to this next installment of the uh, APAC Tech Talks. Um, my name is Stefan Gumpert, and today I have another one of my colleagues with me to share her thoughts and experiences in the industry. Um, I'll let her introduce herself. Um, but look, just as a point of interest, this is just a series of talks or podcast type materials to which we just have a conversation about interesting things that are happening out in the industry, technology, just a general discussion. With that, I might let Maggie introduce herself. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks, Stefan. I'm very honored to be invited to participate in this Tech Talk series. Uh, my name is Magnolia Garcia. As you heard, Stefan, you called me Maggie. You can call me Maggie as well. I'm a solution engineer here in Autodesk, and I look after the infrastructure sector for ANZ. Um, can you believe it? I'm almost close to two years now. Time went by so quickly. Fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, look, I always love seeing some tenure when it comes to Autodesk. Um, uh, you know, it's a great company with great technology. Um, speaking about technology, if... Um, I don't know if we look at industries that you support or have supported in the past. Um, <laughs> what industries have you worked in as a basic background or experience from your side? Oh, boy. Um, have I got a long answer for you? Have, have you got two hours? Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So I actually come from a GIS and surveying background, right? That's what I graduated um, back in uni, but, and I started my career as a GIS engineer. I worked for SV for in Singapore for a short time as well. But since I moved here in Australia around 2012, I shifted my career to a more technology centric career sort of thing. Um, I worked in ACOM in Brisbane for a while as a technology specialist. I was part of the team in there in charge of you know introducing. Um, technology um, um, as a way to uh, introduce efficiencies and time um, savings to um, engineering projects in their aid. And then I also worked um, as, a, as an asset management engineer for Innovice, which, you know, Autodesk later acquired as well. And yeah. I looked after their asset management portfolio for, for quite some time. That's specific to wet infrastructure, right? And of course, nowadays, I have a more civil engineering focus. Nice, nice. I look um, a real, I guess, diverse background there, but I love the fact that it's uh, technology centric, hence the reason why we're having a conversation today. Um, uh, I mean, look, coming back to the industries, um, maybe not specific to uh, your past, but what you're seeing today, what sort of trends are you seeing occur in the market? It's just as a general overview when it comes to technology. Yeah, tech trends. Um, yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, big data definitely is a big one. Uh, we keep on hearing this term that data is the new oil, right? And it's something that a lot of organizations are commoditizing nowadays. Um, they realize that they're actually sitting on the gold mine, right? And they want to make sure that they, they make the most out of that. Um, previously, I'm not sure if you're in that, you know, age bracket, but if you remember, you know, the lack of data used to be our problem, right? Uh, I remember back in grade school, like I used to like bring, you know, these floppy disks um, and they only carry, you know, 1.2 megabytes of data in them of some sort, right? But yes. nowadays, like our problem has now evolved to too much data and we don't know what to do with it. So yeah, definitely big data and in conjunction with that, um, common data environment has now become a, a, a big trend as well, right? Because we have too much data. We want to make sure that we're actually managing that properly. And as I keep on saying to everybody, you know, having a lot of data doesn't bring you any benefit if you don't make analytics out of it, right? Like it's just sitting there and not doing anything for you. It's the value that you extract out of that data is what brings you benefit and what you can monetize on. 100 and i have to say i remember probably oh, be about four or five years ago now when i discovered uh, power bi which oh, gives you okay. to digest a whole bunch of data and then analyze stuff which actually made some really interesting decisions when it came to i guess 
um, understanding what we were doing uh, at Autodesk. So, I mean, data seems to be the the common discussion point at the moment. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, common data environment. I mean, how does how does the data aspect uh, affect the industries these days? Mm, you probably have noticed that you know more and more organizations are coming up with their own digital strategy, right? Yes, the, digital transformation. Correct, correct. Yeah. So the industry is trying starting to realize that you know in order for them to stay competitive, especially in this fast-paced market, right? They need to have a strategy moving forward. And for for me, I feel like they're starting to think big picture nowadays, right? So just a simple example, like for people who are doing field work, for instance, right? Previously, it's just easier to, you know, capture data via pen and paper while you're out there because people are thinking it's just the easiest way to go about it, right? And yeah. they fail to like think big picture, like people have to do data entry when it comes back to the office. Um, some data is lost, some data is unreadable, there are typos and so on and so forth, right? So they're starting to move away from that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that comes back to having a common data environment as well, right? So people are starting to think, you know what, maybe it makes sense to invest in having a common data environment. Because previously it just works that, you know, we're using MS Teams or emails or, you know, SharePoint to share data across, but they, um, are starting to realize that, you know what, this is not the optimal way to go, go about it. It's like there is this study that came out that says, you know, 35% of project time is wasted on, you know, people looking for, where's the data? Is it the latest drawing that I'm using? Is it the one that's on the server or on the email? Like, it's, it just makes sense. Yeah, uh, look, I totally agree. Um, I mean, data has been around for a long time. But a lot of times we tend to silo the data behind firewalls and compartmentize it in folder structures on servers, which generally makes it difficult to find and access. So, mm -hmm. you know, a common data environment obviously Im implies outside the firewall. So accessing to the cloud. Um, it democratizes the data, right? Instead of it being stored away on a server somewhere or sometimes even on a dongle. I see people like storing data on the cabinet where there are like a gazillion dongles in it. <laughs> how do you access that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And how do you make sure you got the right one? Correct. I mean, look, the, the common data environment gives people access to the right information at the right time. And I guess make sure they have access to the latest and greatest version of that data. That's probably uh, more interesting. So, I mean, you spoke a little bit about data and the common data environment. How do you see the these two topics impacting this this new magical term inside our industry called digital twin? Especially as it's like like the, I'm going to say it's the hot topic of the moment. Everyone's got a new concept of digital twin. How do you see these two topics of data and common data environment impacting that uh, discussion? Yeah, that is a good question. And it's definitely like the buzzword at the moment, right? Digital doing this, digital doing that. And um, to be honest, um, I feel like that has been a buzzword for the longest time, but nowadays that's becoming the reality, right? It's becoming closer and closer to the reality. You see, you know, um, government of Victoria mandating digital twin, there's New South Wales as well doing the same thing, right? They're starting to realize the value of you know having that platform where they can extend the data that's been from you know we just have it in uh, the design phase and we can move that to the operational side of things right and use the value out of that. Um, again, there's this study that I saw that says you know 95% of the data that gets created from the design side of the um, asset lifecycle gets unused, right? That's a lot of wasted data that you could 100%. use it to, you know, make better informed decisions about your assets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, if I think about the vertical construction space as opposed to the horizontal construction, right? We have yeah. the same problem, right? Everybody's keen on putting as much information in the model, you know, that BIM, that I component of BIM, right? Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happens to the data? It just tends to stop and be it becomes, you know, they're working con con collaboratively in the cloud, but yeah. it's then siloed 
at the end of that project and it's not being used. So ultimately the data is leading us to make better decisions just like we would in an execution piece, like with you or I, how we tend to execute. I think data is also leading on to the operations piece, which is I think where the digital twin comes into play, right? Mm, yeah. So, I mean, if you've, the fact that you've actually been in the uh, the operations phase, if you like, with your innovised experience, yeah. Uh, how do you see the data piece and and all this playing into that? You know, digital twin, maintenance, operations. How do how do you see that all coming together? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, data is a very valuable aspect of that, right? Um, as asset managers, we're always trying to do our best to make sure that we're maximizing the asset throughout its life cycle, right? And what happens in the industry? Because there's not enough data that they can use. It's usable data is the issue, right? Um, they are just making decisions based on maybe the life of the asset, right? Whereas there's so much other aspects that could be taken into consideration when you're trying to plan for the asset rehabilitation or renewal, right? It's not just the lo- the, the age of the asset. You Correct. could be looking at other things as well in there, right? And nowadays we have access to like live data. We just don't have, you know, static, like digital twin. Like we're moving closer to having a real-time digital twin. And that's something that you should be using. You should be looking into that. Um, the issue in the industry at the moment is that we're poorly planning for the long-term sustainability of our assets simply because one, we don't have um, access to valuable data. Maybe we don't have the means to consume the data. Yep. And two, like it's just like because of that, our analysis is just hindered, right? So like for me, I feel like there's there's a lot more growth that we can we can do in that that regard, like just by maximizing the data that we've got. So, so what I'm hearing is maybe uh, from an industry perspective, um, you know, a bit more pre-planning from those asset owners at the beginning of the inception of a project to understand what data they need to be able to drag from the design process through construction, through to the operation side, better planning of that data, hmm. and giving us a better digital twin. Is that is that sort of what yeah. you're saying as well? Exactly. You have to be... We call this, you know, opportunistic, you know, data, data capture, right? You don't really need necessarily need to spend a big budget to capture data. Maybe it's already there, right? You, it's just because you don't have the data in a centralized location that that do that way you don't have like visibility to it, right? Sometimes the data is already sitting there. It's just scattered in different places. So having again coming back to that central data environment, right? That's a crucial key to making sure that you know you can make the most analysis out of your data and that comes back to you know being a better asset manager as well yeah yeah i mean look i'm starting to, especially in my industry i'm starting to see the ability to curate data in a digital sense so being able to take that construction data seeing inside the construction cloud hmm. and positioning that information through to say tandem from a vertical construction perspective yeah very very exciting stuff um yep. Uh, random question, what do you think the future holds? What's the next big thing? Um, oh, or, 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 or do you see bigger challenges? What, what's what's your thoughts there? I feel, the, well, I feel like maybe I'm too um, optimistic about this, but I feel like it will only get better from here, right? Technology is just exponentially improving. Now we have more access to AI and machine learning capabilities, and it will just make our lives easier, right? I agree. Uh, I, I totally agree. I mean, the access to this information and then the machine learning capability that you mentioned, mm. it's only going to give us, I guess, it's going to make decisions or help us make better decisions, right? If I think about the decisions made when we were designing buildings, you'd do two or three option studies. But with generative design, for example, you could do thousands of these variations. Exactly. And so, um, but then again, you know, that would just give you this opportunity to generate more data. So big data, but yeah, you just have to manage that better. Awesome. Look, I mean, look, I don't want to keep your time. I want to keep this sort of a uh, bit more short and sweet. So look, I definitely appreciate your thoughts and 
uh, feedback today. Um, uh, just any closing remarks before I uh, close this out? Um, data is good, but manage your data better. That's the only way that you can make the most benefit out of it, right? Love it. You heard it here first, right? That was <laughs> good. You've got to manage the data better. Yeah, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Awesome. I'll look with that. I, I want to thank you for your time. And look, if people want to connect with you, I'm, I'm guessing you've got a LinkedIn profile. Um, they'll be able to access you via the email address that will be available on the recording as well. Please reach out to us uh, with that. Maggie, thank you. And everyone, have a good weekend. Bye. Thanks, Stefan. Bye, everybody.